Welcome Aries, your singles read. This is for mid-October. Already started, I had to stop because of a technical difficulty outside my control. And uh, I don't have technical ability to stall right now, so I just start over. But I don't like the way of reading when it's good, when um, uh, Taurus in the ninth house for me. <laughs> It'd be almost like a superstition, I gotta finish it. Um, and I was getting a really good vibe. And I want to say thank you to the singles reading here, Meet the Soulmate. Always positive reading because I'm simply asking Spirit, what's the right one? What's the right one for Aries here? Not the next ex-problem, next ex-wife, next ex-husband. Not that. The right one to do this soul work with. Um, also have the heart spread if you have someone on your mind. And also the soul family read is a daily read. It's up uh, if you would, if you haven't, checked it out and see if you want to be part of that. It's a collective read for whoever resonates. This one is focused on if you are single, super single, completely single, and open to this new energy. Uh, it's looking for the soulmate that wants to come in that's the right one for you to do soul work with, you know. Um, so it's not a triggery. If you see the Three of Swords, no one's breaking up with anyone. But I was saying... And when I look at this with eight cards, two cards in emotional energy, two cards in intellectual energy, two cards in sexual love energy, two cards in lifestyle core values energy, and I get a lot from that. And from that, uh, seldom have to clarify or anything. Um, we try to get a feel for your person, their uh, stories, their personality, behavior maybe. Um, this kind of thing, uh, astrology. I get a lot of the astrology hits. So uh, I want you to be able to identify them when they come along, because this is conceived as someone that you haven't met yet, this reading, okay? That you've cleared the runway, and their plane comes in, lands, because now you're single completely, totally, and you can check them out, um, this one that's right for you. So the first thing I said, I think they have a Taurus moon with this page of pentacles under the two of cups in the emotional. I'll show them here. So you might not see them very well. So this is the page of pentacles, I mean, over the two of cups. So, and I said, likely they're a only child, you know, um, and had a pretty stable, solid uh, childhood. I would say, with this page of pentacles facing into the reading, into the intellect. We'll see what's next to it here in a, mi in a minute, moment though. But, um, and the two of cups is really beautiful. It means they have, this is probably why they're so solid. This is them being grounded and solid, you know, even as a child. Um, partly it's that Taurus moon, but also they had two parents who really loved each other. They might have been gay. It could be, it could be a sense I get with that. Um, but the, Gay or not, they really loved each other and were solid with each other. Had a really wonderful uh, relationship. Uh, uh, Gomez Morticia relationship going on there for your person. Um, and I get the feeling too that they might have had kind of younger parents. Uh, so it would have been two people, I get the feeling their parents would be two people who are kind of intelligent, professional people. And male or female, uh, and both of them would have been, you know, high-functioning, professional people. Um, so, so I'm looking how they would tell you. You can start telling each other your stories. What are they going to say, you know, about their um, childhood, their family? And so also, unless I see this, is, I'm not really willing to say it's a younger person, but guessing with younger parents like this, that they'd be still alive and be part of their life. And that'd be a good thing here. I don't see any problems. So, Eight of Swords is an intellectual position. Now, in the um, Four Pillars, in the Knight of Cups. So, Eight of Swords over the Knight of Cups. This is an intellectual position of these four pillars of relationship. Connection, emotional connection, intellectual connection. Let me look at sexual. I just want to see that. Woot, woot, King of Cups. Ah, it's not the Jim Morrison King of Cups in this deck. But the King of Cups is very interesting to get here. I like it, you know, in the sexual love uh, area. And the Nine of Swords. Don't let that scare you. Uh, 
We'll look at the Venus and the Mars here with that. Let's look at their interesting, that is very interesting. So they're getting a hanging man in their core values and lifestyle. And that's going to be over the lovers. Wow. So they come in with the two of cups and they go out with the lovers. Hello. And remember earlier I said this page of pentacles, we'll kind of see how it's doing uh, as a moon too, as it relate, relates over here uh, to the intellect. It's kind of more in the unconscious position. <clears throat> so, um, God, I really want to see them having a fire sign sun, this person. You know, Taurus moon, and if they have a fire sign, it could be in the eighth house. I know sword you might not associate with uh, Scorpio necessarily or Eight of Swords, um, but it's in, they're in their mind. This is a thing like um, this would be a person they probably present themselves like a fire sign, um, very easy going. <clears throat> it could be even a Leo personality here. Affable, easy going, um, disarming, uh, warm even, you know. But I think there's a lot going on inside of them, you know. Uh, but it's not bad. It's just there's a lot more to them. than they, This is exactly the person, probably more than a lot of people say to them, dude, when I get to know you, uh, you're so different, like from the way I thought you were going to be, or the way I thought you were. So the first house might be strong. That, that's a persona. Um, Taurus moon slow. Maybe they're s slow to open up to uh, people. You know, they'd be pretty well. You know, when you're well balanced like this, also what it means they're not going to tell you stories about the slutty, crazy exes, guys, girls, whatever. They're not going to tell you that kind of Jerry Springer stuff because a person like this likely not going to get involved in that. You know, he does have the Knight of Cups here. She does have the Knight of Cups. Um, but um, it's kind of a fixed energy, you know, with if you're in the eighth house or if you are Leo's son, even, you know, they're both in a fixed house. You know, if it's not in its fifth house. And I don't see it that way. I see it, this is kind of the light and dark. Um, but I think they're, and then they got the fixed moon too, so it's fixed in this Taurus energy. So there's a lot of fixed energy here. And they, you know, you don't want to ever change anyone in a relationship. Well, double that here, quadruple that. Complete waste of time, you know, with this person. Um, and I don't think they would, it would be nothing to them. They're very solid, so it'd be hard for someone to really throw them off their center. You know, they believe what they believe. Taurus, uh, Moon, you know, they're traditional. They're probably conservative, traditional values more, very much value family. Um, they may have, they might value possessions and even security. Second house is Taurus. Um, more it's like so the lot would you know never it upsets everyone right if we're can't pay the bills or low on money stressful but maybe like super stressful for this person you know It'd kind of be what that eight of swords is about too um they might have a tendency to overthink uh, go too deep you get the knight of cups and the eight of swords that's going really deep emotionally that's why I think it's this eighth house. So, and one thing I know about Leo, really doesn't like the eighth house. You know, Leo w wants to just be, doesn't do dark. Does, you know, it doesn't do dark. It's the light, it's the sun. Um, and so they'd have some kind of conflict there too going on um, in themselves. You want, it'd be integrated by the time they're an adult. Um, but you know, I have a Cancer Moon and a Sad Sun. I have to integrate that. That's not doesn't really work well together. Um, 
So then we look at the sexual positions. Okay, they might tell you about being an older, uh, I say only child as well, by the way, I forgot to add, uh, because I don't see the stories with uh, siblings and uh, uh, maybe being pretty self-contained in like, you know, having their own almost like a living space at a fairly early age and um, having a kind of control and sense of place. And I think they would have been very comfortable in wherever they lived. Um, they might tell you that stories. I want to try to pick up on the stories um, they might tell. They may, when they get to know you just a little bit, being a soulmate, this could happen fast. If you happen before you meet, it's up you know, to you, uh, you guys. Um, but I think once they sort of let their guard down, they'll tell you, because they're, they're going to seem, they're not going to seem like a scorpionic personality. They're just going to seem so like a happy and easygoing and wide open and, uh, but so they're really going to have to open up to you let you know how deep they go <laughs> that's what i'm saying until they open up you, uh, people would probably something about their face i don't know you know uh it's like when really beautiful people try to be comedians and it goes against your society's apparent like a uh, weird um zeitgeist ideal of what a comedian should look like and so they're like that so when they go deep it's kind of like wow you know and they probably don't like just do that for everyone, you know, so people might perceive them a lot differently than how they really are. It's not unusual. So with the sexual energy here, if they're gonna be a Leo sun, we've got a King of Cups, that is a Cancer Venus right there, uh, which uh, is really nice. So, um, you know, Cancer Venus is a very sweet Venus, uh, wants to care for the person. Really, moon energy too, fourth house energy. The moon, the fourth house, Venus, the second house, they go together well. Seventh house, even, they go together well. So, <clears throat> um, and I think that's what we would have down here. If that's a Leo uh, sun, with the nine of swords that could be a gemini mars and i i'm thinking more gemini mars because there's this little bit of agitation in them and it's this is not a bad thing you know this is a what so what is that uh being attentive you know the king of cups with this cancer venus this could be smothering downside i would love it it's my sweetest you know you know i kind of have that but in a different arrangement um but you know uh someone should be so caring man or woman and loving towards the person um but then when you add in the gemini mars um could be in terms of saying things uh saying things that are maybe not caring or even if they're not, it's not saying so much that they're saying mean things or cruel things. It's just a lot of emphasis on saying. And the Venus just wants to care for and love and connect intimately with and have emotional connection. And the Gemini, Mars, the action it always wants to take is action in words, action in thoughts. It's not emotional action, you see. So they have a couple of ways that they have some conflicting energy. It's all up to them how they uh, uh, integrate it, which we do. Um, it's kind of what makes us what we are. Um, but you can then look for uh, Taurus Moon, uh, Sun and Leo, uh, Venus here. Cancer and the Gemini Mars. And so it would show in the way they love too. Um, they might separate a little bit, like when they shift from, when they shift into sexuality, it could be a dramatic shift, and they uh, uh, could go, because in terms of love, it'd be so warm and emotional, and soft and gooey, and good, I think, but not everyone would think that way. Um, but that's how this would be. But then with the Gemini Mars, it's going to be more overtly sexual uh, with words. Uh, 
and it, it could be fine you know it's uh, uh to me that'd be i mean i would go well with the gym night uh, mars maybe you know a lot of people don't like it but it'd be fine um but if that's your thing it could be really great because you know uh, this is like in terms of sex a lot of talk a lot of fun a lot of easiness just like third house stuff with a lot of energy in it um it's not like third party stuff um, it's just maybe this is laughing during sex and telling jokes during sex and this kind of thing and a little bit with the sex going on a little bit longer you know in like a Mars and, and Cancer here you have the Venus and Cancer you know that would be a lot of like holding and holding a lot of holding and uh, maybe kissing and you know a lot of uh, physical and uh, could be crying involved you know but I get this, their experience with sex would be at the same time they end love, they're very caring and loving. They're just more fun. They really can kind of let their hair down, man or woman, as it were, and, and really have uh, fun. Um, and they're open because, again, you know, they come from a very good background. They had loving parents, probably were uh, demonstrating appropriately how it is to have affection for one another uh, and respect for one, one, each other. And... Um, so that's how they grew up. This is a very stable way. Um, and there you go. That's how it's going to come out. Um, so I just say, like, they have a sexual, uh, healthy sexuality. You know, they don't probably take themselves too seriously. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Now I move over to the uh, core values in the lifestyle with the hanging man over the lovers. And I don't know if I showed you all these even hanging man over the lovers here and um, it, it, it's man or woman it, I get the feeling with this person I don't really use the bottom of the deck for this reading by the way but that they haven't had much of a career I don't know how that would have worked for them they could have been a housewife a house husband, may, may be may have been I mean it's your person so it's um, you know this will be right for you, however it works out. I conceive of this as in this time frame we're asking, which is a, you know, the middle, middle area of October here. It's the tenth today. Well, the reading comes out tomorrow. Doing it on the tenth, which is uh, the conjunction Mars, uh, Venus. I mean Mars, Mercury, and uh, uh, the Sun. So there's a reading up from this old family. Check that for the weekend if you haven't. It's a good one. Um, but this guy or woman, um, I see them having a lot of emphasis upon love and relationships, you know, bottom line. Um, and with the hanged man, I mean, and they could do something very odd. Um, you know, I'm not saying, this is your person, so if they're going to be, I'm not saying they're into weird sex or something. Um, but they definitely, they have a talent to really see things hanging man different perspective from a really different perspective in terms of like love and romance it, it's like they have this uh this would be like a connection with the zeitgeist like this person can they can tell like ahead of time what styles might be popular they could go buy next year's styles because he just tapped in and they're like no 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 here's what they're gonna want uh, maybe this is the one that might decide what they want. A bon guard comes to mind. This is a bon guard person. So whatever they do, it's really different. Um, it's unique. It's something maybe almost like a carve out something that almost only they could do. Whatever that means. Um, what what your person does, it's so unusual. Uh, something revolved around love, relationships making choices in love and relationships. Maybe they designed a computerized dating site, something like that. But it would be something utterly unique that uh, this is not something anyone else probably could do. That's pretty specific in itself. I mean, it's pretty... So I think that gives you <clears throat> some stuff to go on here. So let me know. You probably won't see this person until in the next few minutes or the next few days or something. I can see this as being someone brand new. Please do get back to me, though, and give me a yell and say, hey, Dave, you know, ran into this person. And like, share, subscribe. Thank you. I really need the help. Thank you, guys.